Wow. <coughs> a pen might be good. Speed seduction in a magazine. Endless pleasure in limousine. In the back shakes a tambourine. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to basically go over or um, expand on what I was talking about when I did the video about Themistas, idiot lights, and how they are used to gauge your fuel level. So, um, we have here some Themistas. These are 1,000 ohms or 1 kilo ohm. They're these little tiny jobbies. And these are... Um, NTC, so this is ne ne negative temperature coefficient. You can't see that, it's bloody tiny. There we go, that's what it looks like. And the reason why I'm zoomed out so much is so you guys can see. If you can see, no, that's not fucking helping, is it? What about that? There we go. There we go. Right, so if we get this, we have this set to resistance, we stick it on this thing. And we get, yeah, oh, it's quite cool in here actually. Uh, 1.2, I'll hold it in my hand for a second, warm it up a bit. Oh, actually, no, we should be cooling it down to be quite honest. There we go. You can see it's changing all the time, its resistance, because the temperature is changing. Um, however hot this is right now. But I think it's set at 20 degrees C, this should be 1,000 um, ohms or 1 kilo ohm. So we can put that to one side for a minute. And either I wasn't clear enough or whatever um, in my last video, because some people said they still don't get it. Maybe I wasn't being clear, you know, fair enough. Any road, how does this thing work? Well, basically, we have a circuit, so we have a battery, like so. We have this thing, which is our NTC. I should put it the right way so you guys can fucking see. That's our NTC, like this. And then we have a bulb like so and then basically this just completes the circuit now obviously there's your ignition switch in here somewhere so we'll just put a switch in or whatever there's a switch in there somewhere and it's fused and all the rest of it but basically what's going on well you have a complete circuit here and if there was no uh, thermistor here no thermistor at all the bulb would come on when you close the circuit but what is an NTC? It's a negative temperature coefficient resistor. The way you can think about it is that this is your wire coming in, so one of your legs on this, your actual uh, component, and then inside there, it is basically just like a valve, right, like this, if you want to think about it like that. Now, this is resistance in a sense. How resistant this um, component is. So this is our NTC here, right? So this is our NTC. And generally the way that resistors, just normal resistors work, is that when the temperature increases, so when T here increases, uh, the resistance goes up as well. So resistance also goes up. Uh, these are negative temperature coefficients, so basically the coefficient is the the value, and this is a negative, so it's the opposite. So what these are is not this, is when the temperature increases, the resistance goes down, like so. Awesome. So in a sense, what you can think is, as this thing gets hotter, as the temperature increases, this opens up. So instead of being like this, it's more like this. So now we're like that, and then current, because this isn't here no more, so if we do that again, to make it blatantly clear, it's just like a little nip like that. So now current can run through, you know, with little resistance, it's, impede, you know, it's not impeded as much. So that's basically what it's doing. What I didn't state was the fact, or what I didn't make clear, is that when you switch your ignition key on, this this the mister that's in your your part of your idiot light circuit is on. Power is being supplied to it, and it's this that heats up because it has a thousand kilo uh, because it has a thousand ohms a kilo ohm at twenty degrees. It means that its resistance is quite high. So in a sense, what we're trying to do is we're trying to push current through here, um, and you require that current to make that bulb glow. 
if you can cool this down, then the resistance will increase. So this is when it's hot, and when you close it, when you cool it down, this closes down, and there's a lot of resistance, which means enough current can't pass to light the bulb. Which means that basically, when you put your ignition switch on, this whole system just basically lights up. And this is why, um, or this is basically what we do is, or what they do is, is that they take advantage of this system. So let's let's prove it. Let's show you. So what I've got here is a very simple circuit. It is a bulb out of a bike. This is a five. Uh, this is a five watt bulb. I can't bloody read what it says on the side of there. I think it's a five watt bulb. And then we have our thermistor here. So there's our thermistor. Here's our bulb. And basically, as you can see, we have just got pretty much what I drew, just without the battery in the middle like this to our bench top power supply we can turn it on up oh, she's already on what the fuck am i doing now what you can see is is that the current is going up and our bulb comes on if you can see that and this ah is getting fucking hot so as you can see our bulb gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter as the temperature of this goes up and you can see that we're drawing more and more current because as this heats up the current uh, the resistance drops which allows the current to flow and light up our bulb and you can see there we're starting to level off now because the bulb will only draw so much so what we can fucking camera bloody camera so what we can do is is we can just basically do it again turn it on like so you can see the bulb you can see the power the current draw there and the bulbs coming on you can see that lovely and we can also fuck around with it because if we use this compressed air can to cool it down we can make the bulb go out fucking awesome and then she'll come back on when she heats up see the bulb oh that pen's in the way see the bulb coming on and we just cool it up cool it down cool it down cowabunga so basically what i do our fuel is cooling this bulb constantly and when the fuel level drops and this is exposed to air the bulb comes on all lovely, all brilliant. Fun doesn't just stop there. We are... So the fun doesn't just stop there. What I have done is I've gone and bought myself a little toy. And that is this, the thermal camera. So in the thermal camera you can see... Um, that's me turning it on. You can see that I've targeted there the thermistor and the uh, light bulb as well. So when I turn this on try not to saturate the image too much there we go I hope they'll do like a split screen or something and these are timed together we can see the thermistor starting to heat up there we go 22 as the amperage goes up there we go we're starting to kick off now Yeah, there we go, 30. We've got bulbs coming on. You can see the heat pissing out of them. There we go, you can see as one gets hot, the other gets hot absolutely wonderful and there you have it basically so as soon as we cool this down I can do that without fucking the camera cool it down oh bulb doesn't go out fucking hell she's resilient bloody hell fire now she's very resilient <laughs> but anyway you get what I mean you can see the amperage go up and blah de blah de blah but we haven't finished just yet right then so we can go one step further with this we can be, i can demonstrate exactly how this thing works now i don't have any um, petrol on me at hand yes there's some in the bike and all that shit but i'm not fishing that shit out the best thing i've got that's closest to hand is um ipa so that'll just have to you could use acetone the specific uh, heat capacity of uh, acetone and IPA and methanol and ethanol and stuff is very close. It's around about 2,200 joules per kilo Kelvin. 
Um, you don't really need to know the uh, scales and all the rest of it, but you can still see we've got uh, 12 volts up close, not a bloody 12 volts. There we go, 12 volts. Um, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to switch this on, I'm going to switch the thermal camera on. There we go. And you can see from the thermal image that we're looking about um, 19, 19 Celsius, around about there. So what I'll do is switch this on, and we'll start to see it heat up. And you can immediately start to see it heat up straight away. You can see it's starting to go red on the thermal image, and so on. And how hot does it get? I want to see actually at what temperature that bulb start, at what um, current draw that bulb comes on at. We could actually turn that light off. Actually, that'll help us a bit to see the bulb. There we go. So around about one um, 150 milliamps was about what it's doing, and you can see it's cooking away 80 degrees, 90 degrees. It's nicely cooking away. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our IPA in, like so up to the brim there and immediately you can see the temperature drop you can see that plume of IPA come out but you can see that the temperature really isn't rising and our bulb is staying unlit it's just out you know we're drawing what uh, 60 milliamps 50 milliamps 40 milliamps you can see that this and what's really cool is that the IPA is really translucent to um, Oh, infrared, which is always good. There we go, look, 20, 19. There we go, you can see the temperature. You can see there's a hot spot, there's a hot region, that's due to convection um, around it. But you can see that really it's making no difference. That bulb is staying out, and that's how it is in your fuel tank. This thing does not have the capacity to um, heat up your entire fuel tank so you get a false reading. So basically, that's it. We've, um, you know, this is a demonstration of exactly how this thing works. You can see now that, you know, as the um, amperage, as the current goes up, the light bulb comes on when she's hot. And then if we stick it in something cold, this is just water, stick it in something cold, the light shear goes out. So we're all happy, and my legs are unfortunately in water because of water's conductivity. We are actually getting some hydrogen bubbles coming off because that's basically an anode. But you can see, you know, how this system works. It's really quite simple, actually, and um, I hope that makes it clear. You know, because like I say, some people said I don't quite understand. Like I say, these things are constantly in the power. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.